45% chance as we speak of earning the number one seed. Chiefs are the team, obviously, that is better. And you see between those two, you add that up, that's 99%. So it will be one of those two teams. Clearly, this game is critical for Pittsburgh. Still holding on to the one seed because their only loss came to an NFC team. And that brings us to Diana Russini. Diana, this is your game this weekend. What are we looking the most closely at Pittsburgh Buffalo? All right, so I talked to some defenders on the Steelers' side of this, and one of the players said to me that they truly believe that Josh Allen has the strongest, most powerful arm of any quarterback in the league. And I followed up with, well, better than Patrick Mahomes. And he's like, yeah, he's Patrick Mahomes is acrobatic. This guy is just all power. But that being said, here's what we can expect from this Steelers defense. They are going to put pressure on Josh Allen. And, of course, your first thought is, well, you may not want to do that, right? Because he's so mobile. He does such a good job of extending the play. But the Steelers have a lot of confidence that they can rush him and force him to make some mistakes. They believe that if they can just take away that deep ball against Stephon Diggs and underneath of Cole Beasley, they can have some success. But they certainly have tons of respect for what this Bills offense has been able to do as – we know they watched closely on Monday night at Josh Allen's performance against the 49ers, which was just spectacular. Yeah, it was a tale of two very different teams on Monday with the Steelers, their first loss against Washington, and of course, Josh Allen's coming out party against San Francisco. And so, R.C., let me come to you as my resident former Steeler. What do you see in that football team right now, and what does this game mean in your opinion? I think this game is huge. I think this game against the Buffalo Bills will say a lot as to how far the Pittsburgh Steelers can go in the playoffs. When you look at a team that hasn't truly had a bye week, a team that's playing these muffled schedules or these schedules that have been moved or have been mobile, I think it's very difficult to continue to be up, to continue to be healthy, to continue to be fresh for all of these games. But you have to because now they're getting in a situation where they can start to use lose playoff positioning, where you could find yourself as the second seed or the third seed and now playing a team in week one and let's be honest if you continue to lose defensive players if you continue to not have an opportunity or continue to go away from the one run game not stick to the run game put everything on a 38 year old quarterback with a rebuilt elbow this team could be home at the first game of the, of the first week of the playoffs and that's mm. not what you want to see when you're an 11 and 0 team a team that had Super Bowl aspirations and so I believe that this game is supremely important I know that coach Tomlin understands that I believe his team will understand that now they have to go out and execute undermanned they have to go out and execute missing some some very important pieces to this defense and so I'm interested in to see what Keith Butler can dial up the defensive coordinator of the Steelers to put pressure on Josh and stop Stephon Diggs on the outside I, again I, I would I would repeat just to make the point you did at the beginning this is their second consecutive game on short rest. It's their third game in the last 12 days. They go Wednesday to Monday to Sunday. And Rob Ninkovich, you were talking last week on this program about how sometimes losing a game for one of these teams that take a, a, an unbeaten run deep into a season can be a good thing. What do you think now? Yeah, I mean, I, look, unfortunately, they lost to Washington. But at the end of the day, you can use that tape as kind of like coming back to reality. You're not undefeated anymore. Look, you guys aren't that good. You can put on the tape and show the team this isn't a uh, this isn't a pretty filter like on social media where you can take a picture, make it look good, and then everyone likes it. No, 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 no. This is real life. You put on the tape. You say, look, if we continue to play like this, this ain't a rental car where you got to turn it back. Everyone knows that you don't. You haven't bought this car. You got to go out there. You got to prove to everybody that we are for real. We are the real deal. In the, in the NFL, the easiest way to do that is to go out there and approve it. And the easiest way to show that you're pretending is. My phone just cut off. No, it did not. We're good. We've got you, Nick. We've got you here. We're good. Uh, but, but let me, this is TV in 2020. He can't hear us. So let's just go single to Ryan Clark, if I could, for a brief moment here, if I can, Jen. And let me just ask you, RC, what's the one thing you need to see the Steelers do to, have, to win this game on Sunday night against the Bills? The Steelers need to run the football. The Steelers need to find an identity that says that we could continue or we still can be physical. This is what this organization was built on. We don't show highlights and Heinz feel of the offense and everybody gets excited. No, it's about physicality. It's about putting your face mask on, on another man's face mask and bending his will. The Pittsburgh Steelers have gotten away from that. The Pittsburgh Steelers now lose Bud Dupree. So let's start the physicality up front with the offense, with Marquise Pouncey, with James Conner returning. 
one and then move into the play action pass. Be a team that can pick up third and one and fourth and one and not be at the bottom of the league. You can't win championships going forward in the playoffs without some form of physicality up front offensively, and they don't have it. And I think when teams start to turn into that, teams also start to turn into being a little softer defensively and to kind of mirroring what they see of an offense that passes the ball 53 times, and we saw that against the Washington football team. The Pittsburgh Steelers have to get back to who we thought they'd be at the beginning of the season, which is a team that would stick with the run, now go to play action pass, and dominate you defensively. Defensively. This is a perfect week to show it, but it's also the week they have to show it if they want to be the number one overall seed and get out of the first week of the playoffs. Yeah, Diana, what are you hearing from Pittsburgh about their level of just self-confidence based upon that defeat? Everyone had sort of questioned their record anyway. Now they lose a bad game. What is your sense coming out of that locker room? Yeah, much like what Rob was alluding to, I think losing to Washington probably was the best thing to happen to this team. I've heard over and over over the years of covering football, sometimes when you win, it camouflages some of the mistakes when you're taking a look at those details. It's after a loss when you really grind the tape and you look at the improvements that need to be made. So while they know that they are not a perfect team, after losing to Washington, they realize they need to make some corrections here. And Mike Tomlin apparently has run a pretty tight ship this past week, talking to players this week, just kind of getting a vibe of what the tone is. And, and, and it isn't anything different. We know Mike runs a tight ship. But in terms of the expectations this week, these guys are coming to play in Buffalo. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.